When I say cuddle party, what do you picture? Maybe you picture something playful, something salacious. Well, actually, people will come in, they'll take a seat, they'll be really anxious, and like, what the f am I about to do? Why did I come here? And then we'll have a welcome circle, and by the end of that welcome circle, everyone has a cohesive understanding of how to communicate and the agreements that we're making. And then we'll move into freestyle cuddling, where you get to interact with whom you'd like to and create what you'd like within the boundaries that we've agreed to. And then we have a closing circle, a very small closing circle at the end, just for people to get to speak about their experience. And, and there's snacks. <laughs> and there's snacks. <laughs> Sounds good to me. I'm Kyone Wolf. Spoon with me at a 25-person strong cuddle party. That's coming up next on Audacious, right after the news. From Connecticut Public Radio in Hartford, this is Audacious. I'm Kyone Wolf, and I love cuddling. But, well, I mean, only under certain circumstances, right? Like, for me, I gotta be attracted to the person I'm cuddling with. And if there's an emotional connection, whoo, can't get enough of it. The novelty of cuddling just never wears off. But, well, isn't that kind of a limited experience of cuddling? I mean, it's conditional, right? On attraction. So what am I missing out on by needing these conditions in order for cuddling to be effective, to bring me joy and relief? Is it possible to cuddle with someone I'm not sexually attracted to and, well, still feel good? And I'm single now, right? So at what point would, say, experiencing a professional cuddlist or going to a cuddle party really unlock some comfort for me. Would it unlock some comfort for me? Later, I'll find out as I nuzzle up to some new friends at a 25-person strong cuddle party in Killingworth, Connecticut. But this curiosity about cuddling began for me back in 2017 when I heard about this professional cuddlist, Amanda Ananda. At the time, she worked out of a bright and spacious studio in New Haven, Connecticut, and I went to visit, <clears throat> and in the living room, we got to know each other a little bit, and I told her how, at the time, I had a girlfriend, and we'd been together for a few years, and so I wasn't really feeling like I had a lack of affection, but I did have a lot of questions about her work. Then we moved into another room where there was a big queen bed. Okay, so let's yeah. get on the bed. This sounds so strange. strange. <laughs> Do people stay above the covers, below? Depends, depends on what they want. It's I'm, cool in here, yeah. It's I have a feeling it's going to come. Your answers are going to be a lot. It depends on what you want. Totally, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it totally does. Let's go over the covers. Okay. Okay, and I'll lie down on, on the right side of the bed. Okay. Can I put my arm here? Yes. So you've got your arm around my waist, and that does feel really nice. Hmm. And I like to bring some mindfulness and breath work into the session, just to help us like drop into the moment and into our bodies, just to like really melt into the yumminess that's possible. So are you open to some of that? I am. So you want to take a deep breath in. And so you can exhale with the sound. <sighs> and just like envision just dropping the stress, like whatever it took to get here. Another deep inhale in, and exhaling. <sighs> and this is it. This is it. We just kind of hang out in this really peaceful space. Sometimes clients have a lot to share, and I can sometimes be like a, a just a listener and kind of a dumping ground for emotions of what's going on in their life. And other times they just want to be in silence and just feel held and connected with somebody. Mm. Do you get any total creeps that cross the boundaries and you got to kick them out? I have a lot of creepy requests through the the cuddle forms, like the, the session request forms. Mm. I would say about one third of requests, I do not see them. Like I have a very strong vetting process. We really have to be compatible for what I offer and what you're looking for. And so through the vetting process, I weed a lot of those out. I've n never had to kick a client out, but there was one client that I wouldn't take back. What happened? They were putting their hand, like, just gently, but just around my neck, kind of. 
And I asked them not to do it once, and they didn't for a while, and then, you know, it happened again. And I think it was an accident. And I asked again, I said, you know, I'm, I'm still not comfortable with that. And they made a comment kind of degrading about what I'd I think they were offended by my saying I was uncomfortable. And, and so it just felt uncomfortable to not have my boundaries, you know, honored um, and just felt like I couldn't risk my, my safety being in there, you know, having them in my personal space again. You were saying earlier that some people are looking for someone to listen and some people haven't been touched in a really long time. <laughs> I was single for like 10 years and mm. I... When I would go on plane rides, I would choose to bypass that big machine that you have to put your hands up and stuff, and it mm. swishes around you. I just wanted the pat down so I could feel Aww. human touch again, <laughs> which is so sad. But when you said that some people just haven't been touched in a long time and mm-hmm. they come for that, what kind of reactions do you get? There's often a lot of tears there's a lot of hopelessness in people's lives. And after a session with me, there's kind of a renewed hope, a renewed belief that maybe they're worthy of finding that in their lives on a more regular basis, you know, more than they're going to see me once or twice a month, you know. So oftentimes it can be very moving. It's beautiful to watch them open up to receiving it after they haven't for so long, to really just like settle into like that yumminess, that connection. Also, I think that need, that like desire for being, you know, touched, even if it's just a pat down, like that's often why people go to a massage is they don't realize like they're really looking for that touch and that affection. Our society is very touch deprived and it's something most people aren't talking about how touch deprivation really can affect us. Cuddling helps us to produce oxytocin and that really combats cortisol, the stress hormone. And as we know, like stress causes a lot of issues in our body. So cuddling is a very natural way to help combat those stress levels. And if people were less touch deprived, then we might be healthier. What are some ways people have asked you to hold them that's been more novel or less common? A little less common, but actually one of my favorite ways to both give and receive It's kind of like the experience of having a heavy blanket, if you've ever experienced one of those. And so, like, they'll lie down on their belly, and then I'll lie down on their back. It's kind of just like this heaviness, this settling in, but it's really actually surprisingly delicious. (laughs) It's one thing to be touched, Mm. but it's another to be, like, squeezed Mm. and held. Why do you think people respond so much? I think there's a deep need to be wanted and to be needed. And I think that with that gesture, it's very much like, oh, I need you, I want you. Like, I'm squeezing her as I say this, by the way. Like, (laughs) it's, you know, like, it's very, like, like, you're very wanted. Like, even that person wants you close to them. And it's a very nonverbal way to communicate that. One of the things that my mind keeps going back to when I think about this is, to me, putting this, like, on a spectrum. You have on one end, you know, massage therapy, which is the whole body, Mm -hmm. give or take. And then there's this more specialized job of being a snuggler or a cuddle therapist. How do you like to call your profession? A cuddlist, Cuddlist. professional cuddler, yeah. Great. And then the mind easily goes to, well, well then what's next? Like this isn't, what we're doing isn't sexual, Mm. but we're on a bed, you have your arm Mm. around my waist. This is a position that is like the precursor in Mm. people's private lives to having sex. Mm. And so thinking philosophically about prostitution, like sexual Mm -hmm. therapy, what do you think about that separation that you're getting close to it, Mm -hmm. even if you'll never go there as a professional? What do you think about that line being drawn and continued into prostitution? I would definitely admit that cuddling is a very intimate act, and absolutely the majority of society has this belief that cuddling leads to sex. And there is definitely a lot of educating around what I do and those that come in that cuddling doesn't need to lead to sex. That's actually misinformation, that if we were taught or lived in a society that cultivated the belief that cuddling could remain platonic and that we can be in control of our bodies and make moral decisions, then we could all be more affectionate with each other and receive, you know, receive our touch needs without feeling this obligation to be sexual with one another. From a very young age, you know, we're taught not to touch each other, I feel like, in school. And 
and you know it's taboo to hold hands or kiss or you know just be affectionate even if it's not explicitly sexual even if it's just lovingly you know when we're young and the hormones start to flow like how much less needy we might be for those sexual experiences if we were getting just our affection needs met if we could just say hey i just want to cuddle with you and have that honored um, and have people really learning consent and what it means to have boundaries and what it means to honor one another and, and be able to have these co-creative experiences of pleasurable, just non-sexual platonic affection with each other. Is there any society that you know of that treats cuddling that way already? There was a study done that, uh, I think they studied people at, in cafes. So like a, a group of people sitting at a table for an hour in different countries. And some countries have a higher level of affection than others. So for example, in North America, it was typically, you know, one to two touches in a given hour at a cafe, which was typically a hello and goodbye. Sometimes a third if, you know, they're really excited and give each other a high five. Mm. But in different parts of the world, there was they touched each other significantly more often. In Puerto Rico, it was 136 times, I think, in an hour, just like lovingly, like holding their arm while they're talking or just a different way of being. And so I don't actually know if I have the answer that you're looking for, but I know that there is culturally more accepted affection than we have here. Do most of your clients identify as male or female? I would say that 90% currently identify as male, but I've really been enjoying that more females have been, um, I've been getting more female requests. Is there an age range that's most common? Every age range comes in, but I want to say the most common would probably be in the 40 to 65 range. Why do you think that is? Uh, A lot of my clients are going through separation or divorce or have possibly been single their whole lives, and they're just very lost in who they are and what they want and figuring out how to obtain that. I'd like to hear how you got into this. I was getting separated three years ago. And I realized I was in an affectionless marriage and realizing how important affection was to me. I I had two kids, and at the end of the day, I really wanted to connect with my partner in that way and to feel hope (laughs) that life was going to get easier and that, you know, I'm doing well. And just like having that connection with someone at the end of the day can feel, can bring a lot of joy into your life. And my partner just, just isn't that person like sometimes people are cuddle monsters and sometimes they're not and that's not the reason we got separated but that was a realization that I had that it was important to me and at the time I was joking around like well I'm just gonna have all my cuddly friends over and we're gonna cuddle together and I'm gonna get my needs met that way Uh, little did I know that cuddle party was actually a thing that has been going on for about 12 years it was started in New York City and I attended one a few months after separating and my mind was just blown I was in shock over the experience that I had. What did you see? So the first hour or so is like a welcome circle that explains the rules of the event, how to communicate, icebreakers. And then you just go into creating cuddles with people. I realized in the first hour that I did not have my no and that I had never said no to anybody in 27 years. And I was freaking out. And I was the totally awkward mannequin person who, like, you'd ask and I'd be really awkward, like, okay. And then I'd be super stiff and just, it was terrible. And I didn't, I didn't want anything that's happening to me and I couldn't say no. So finally, I think after the first hour, I got the courage up to say no. And the person responded with, to me with a really cheerful, well, thank you for taking care of you, and, like, walked off. And I was like, oh, my God, I just got permission to say no. And it felt incredible and was completely life-changing for me. And I realized I cannot be the only person who's having this experience. And why is this not happening more often on the East Coast? And so I came back really fired up about offering that experience to people. So I got trained to hold that space and um, started holding cuddle parties here. It's very open, but it's also, it's very empowering and very creative. You talk a lot about the importance of consent and using language has that seeped into other parts of your life you know like if you're at the grocery store and you want to move around somebody is it a is it a different oh it's been completely empowering absolutely learning how to communicate my boundaries that I'm allowed to have boundaries has been life-changing and getting to practice that two to three times four times a day I'm just an entirely different person with how I communicate with intimate partners but also how I relate to people in the world 
when you think about what you do and this work and you think like way down the line to like, wow, this really, really worked. Mm -hmm. What does it look like in terms of your place in this business? I often view myself as a fire starter, as a kind of that spark that ignites people's hearts or their minds to think about something. And it's been really exciting to spark that conversation around boundaries, around consent, around non-sexual affection and that and the possibility that can be created when you're in that space with people. I love kind of watching people's minds expand as they experience a cuddle party or they experience a session with me of this realization that, oh, like I can have this more in my life if I just ask for it and, and share that I have this need or I have this desire, or I have this want, and also how to receive rejection or what I would rather call redirection. It's very empowering to be able to lead a life where you're not attached to people saying yes all the time. It's been beautiful the last two years to kind of watch the ripple effect and watch people who come here change, but also hear their stories around you know, being able to say no to their boss and being able to get this beautiful weekend with their family. or, And that will create positive effect with the kids in the future. And I think that the more people that are talking about this and exercising their ability to communicate in this way and their boundaries and their yeses and nos, and the more transparent and honest communication we have, the healthier, less traumatized society we'll be living in. That was professional cuddlist Amanda Ananda. When we get back, take a deep breath in. Exhale. Welcome to Cuddle Party. Have fun! Go! I'm Kion Wolf, reuniting with Amanda Ananda five years later for a 25-person strong cuddle party. This is Audacious. Stay with me. Cuddle me, girl. Cuddle me close. Cuddle me, girl. Ooh, you are the most. You can keep your kisses. Smooches and stuff. Just cuddle me, babe. You've got enough. <laughs> This is Audacious. I'm Kyone Wolf, and today you're coming with me as I visit, for the first time, a cuddle party with 24 other people. Earlier, you met professional cuddlist Amanda Ananda. Now, five years after that interview, we met again in her home in Killingworth, Connecticut. In her den were tapestries, beautiful lights, and lots and lots of pillows and blankets and cushions. Every inch of the room, and I mean every inch, was covered in softness. The dress code for the night was pajamas, and no alcohol or other drugs were allowed. Oh, and everybody had to show a negative COVID rapid test at the door. Before the party kicked off, Amanda introduced me to Isaac Palman. He's a cuddle party facilitator in training. And the three of us huddled up before we cuddled up to talk about what to expect. And thanks to my previous experience with Amanda, I offered my interpretation of the party. Which was? It's a consent party with cuddling. Mm -hmm. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Consent is the main. What does my party. father say? It's a it's a consent workshop cleverly disguised as a pajama party. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. And what better arena <laughs> to test out consent yeah. than in this place where yeah. people are close and cuddling and safe? Mm. Yeah. Um, so how will it go? People will come in. They'll take a seat. They'll be really anxious. And like what the. F am I about to do? Why did I come here? And then we'll have a welcome circle. And by the end of that welcome circle, everyone has a cohesive understanding of how to communicate and the agreements that we're making. You'll have met many people in the circle and already feel comfortable with, a few, with many of them. And then we'll move into freestyle cuddling where you get to interact with whom you'd like to and create what you'd like within the boundaries that we've agreed to. And then we have a closing circle, a very small closing circle at the end, just for people to get to speak about their experience and and there's snacks. <laughs> and there's snacks. <laughs> oh, yeah. and, and there's cats. And there's Roberts. <laughs> Roberts. This is the Dread Pirate Roberts. Nice. <laughs> nice. 22 people then made their way inside, and I'd estimate that the ages were between early 20s and upper 60s. Everybody identified as either male or female, and I'd say there were only a few more women than men. 
Uh, we didn't explicitly talk about race or ethnic backgrounds, but I identified two people as black. One introduced himself as Bangladeshi, and there were others whose backgrounds I'm not sure about. Some came from down the road, and others came from as far as Boston and Philadelphia. One similarity we all shared was that we were all pretty reserved. Meek, even, if you can imagine me as meek. Most people said this was their first cuddle party, which, frankly, made me feel better. Once we were all settled in, Amanda got the party started. So this is the welcome circle, the workshoppy part of the event, where we're going to introduce ourselves. We're going to go over the rules of cuddling for tonight. We're going to teach some skills for communication and a few activities that'll help us all get comfortable with each other. I'm inviting you all to take a deep breath in. Exhale. So here at Cuddle Party, we like to get all the scary stuff out of the way first. And so it's time for the no exercise. Mm -hmm. uh, I invite you to turn to the person next to you. Person A is going to ask person B a question. And person B, your job is to look person A straight in the eye and say no. Even if you want to say yes, the exercise in this exercise, you must say no. So A is going to ask B a question. B is going to look A in the eyes and say no. And those who are asking A, when the, after B says no, you're going to respond with a thank you for taking care of you. Okay? So we're going to give you an example. Are you ready? Yes. Do you want to ask? Do you want A or B? I'm going to be A. Okay. Amanda, mm -hmm. may I kiss you? No. Thank you for taking care of yourself. Isaac. Yes. It would make my night if these lips could touch your lips. Could no. we make that happen? No, not tonight. Well, thank you for taking care of you. <laughs> <laughs> so just like that, okay? Makes sense. So have fun with it. Ask a couple times and we'll tell you when to switch roles. Okay, now my partners in this part of the workshop didn't want to be taped, but this part was so much more powerful than I expected. There were times I said no, like one of them asked if he could nuzzle my neck, and I could feel the relief in my body that I was saying no. But there were times I said no, like when he offered to give me a shoulder massage, and I felt disappointed that I had to say no. It was amazing that I could feel in my body the alignment or misalignment with my no. I had never had the opportunity to test that out before. Amanda and Isaac started going through all the rules of Cuddle Party, of which there are many. My favorites were you have to ask permission and get a verbal yes before touching. And maybe means no. I'm going to take that one with me. We did a few more exercises about consent. And finally... We want to invite you to check in with the people where you are if you'd like to stay with them. Otherwise, you can excuse yourself. Snack tables should be open. Help yourself to food and drink. Please keep the space tidy. And I'm going to turn up the music. And don't forget to have fun. Welcome to Cuddle Party. Have fun! Go! Be free. After the welcome ceremony, the first person I wanted to cuddle with was the facilitator, Isaac. And now that I'm well-trained in cuddle etiquette... I asked him. How do you feel about um, maybe you being in the corner there mm -hmm. and uh, put your arm around me? Sure, yeah. Like, like sitting up? Yeah. Okay. If that's yeah. all right? Yeah, that's great. Okay. So I have to put words to the fact that I've never cuddled with a man. It feels... How would you like my arm? Do you want it on your shoulder? Yeah. Like this? Oh, and then they scoot up. Yeah. All right. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And, uh, is it okay if I put my hand on your Yes, thank you for asking. Okay. And it's funny because, yeah, I don't know what that tension is about. And I think part of it has to do with connecting affection with sex. Mm -hmm. And even though I've had sex with men, it's... Cuddling to me feels even more intimate than sex. Yeah. Does that make sense? It makes complete sense, and I, quite honestly, I hear that a lot. Uh, it, it's, I think, um, what I've what I've heard from people is that sex 
going straight to a, a more sexual encounter can actually be a way to of avoiding intimacy. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that s- the slowing down and the dropping into actual desire that is invited in a cuddle space can actually raise uh, some deep-seated fears, trauma responses, um, memories of childhood uh, experiences that um, in a way that a sexual encounter ca- can, but it because we we often engage with sex in very like almost mechanical ways like we know what we do we always do that thing you know we're often always with the same partner you know it, um, I've just seen time after time people become very moved emotionally or triggered even in couple spaces in a way that they may be seasoned swingers and have you know gone to all kinds of you know highly sexually charged environments but this space has a way of bringing something out and then it's a little different yeah so what you're saying makes a lot of sense thanks for affirming that um are you open a little stroking on your arm yeah you can stroke my arm thanks for asking can i rub your knee yes looking into cuddlists, I see that most of them are women, cis women, um, don't seem to be too many men in this field. Why do you think that is? Yeah, that's a really, really great question um, that I think even the folks at Cuddlist are trying to trying to crack. I, I don't know the answer to that question, but if I had to surmise one, it would be that um, men, maybe in a general way, um, particularly cis men, um, maybe even more particularly cis heterosexual men, have a tendency to sexualize all forms of touch. So, uh, you know, someone touches them and they sort of project out uh, a storyline about how that might lead to a sexual encounter. And so I think, um, I wouldn't be surprised to hear that, uh, while that there's a relationship between the number of um, cuddle cuddlist practitioners being women, and that the uh, number of um, people seeking cuddle cuddles is maybe predominantly men. I don't know that that's true, but it wouldn't surprise me if it was, because I think men are at a kind of a turning point in our culture and are looking for something different. Uh, I, I read. Um, I read a book of, uh, several years ago about, it was on the topic of men seeking um, uh, connection with uh, sex workers. And it was called 11 Minutes. Uh, and the, it was based on the, the statistic that uh, men who are with a sex worker may spend two or three hours in their presence, but only 11 minutes actually engaged in sex. And that most of what they're seeking and what they're um, desiring is someone to talk to, someone to listen to them, someone to touch them, uh, in, even in non-sexual ways. So those are more observations and answers to your question, but I, I think that there's a deep desire on the part of men to uh, be embodied and to um, engage in a touch that feels more authentic. What do you think would have to change in the world for things like cuddle parties and professional cuddling to be totally normal? Like, oh, of course. Well, just like, you want to go to the movies? You want to go out to dinner? You want to go to a cuddle party? Like, don't even blink an eye. What do you think would have to be different in this world? We would have to decouple um, touch, intimacy, and sex uh, from one another um, in a in like a on a cultural paradigm level. Uh, so that because there are members of my own family, my father's a cuddle party facilitator. I, I'm a cuddle party facilitator in training. Uh, there are members of my immediate family who still think that what we're doing is a is a sex orgy. And no matter how many times we repeat that it's a non-sexual event, they can't get it through their head that people would engage in consensual touch and have it not be sexual. Uh, so that, that coupling runs really, really deep in our culture. 
And I don't know of any better way of creating that opportunity for that decoupling than in this experimental lab we call Cuddle Party. But maybe it needs to happen on a, on a much more frequent scale, a much larger scale. These last three years, there's been almost no live cuddle parties at all. And so they're coming back with a vengeance, as you can see from the number of people who squashed themselves into this room tonight. I think I'm good. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank I'm going to check out the snacks and then yes, yes. Get, get myself back in. Great. Thank you very, very much. You're welcome. Appreciate Thank it, you. Isaac. I was feeling a little overwhelmed, and also I had to pee, so. Okay, this is Kayon reporting from the bathroom. I feel both lighter and also more tense. A lot of neurons firing that don't normally fire, so. Part of me just wants to run, get in the car and call it a night, but then I also really am drawn to, I don't know, each interaction is totally different. I mean, everybody's really sweet. Uh, I hope I can shake this tension. I went over to the snack table and in between bites of celery and hummus, Ari approached me and asked to cuddle. Now, I got to admit, I was kind of excited to be cuddling with two men in a row, you know? I mean, exposure therapy, right? But not that kind of exposure. Anyway. Okay, do you want to... Um, I'd, I'd love to sit and maybe sure. cuddle yeah, and yeah, talk. Yeah. Sure. Maybe in a place that feels yeah, comfortable. So, yeah, we want to bring that... Do you think kitchen would be okay for everyone? Yeah, what about over here? <laughs> Did you bring this blanket? <laughs> no, it's, it's like just there. Else, like, yeah, just... Nice. Ari, right? Yes. Um, what What do you like for cuddling? I would love to uh, learn from you first, actually. If I'll go for your preference, but my thing is I'm pretty much open because I would love to see the energy of uh, the person I'm cuddling with because I'm new in this journey. Uh, so I would love to honor that person, like if they have any desire or something feel good for that person or maybe that person's day is a little tight or maybe have something tight in the shoulder or they want a little back massage or something or just start with the spooning and go from their little conversations. What do you think about if you lie down and I put my head on your chest and wrap my arm around your waist. That would be beautiful. Okay. All right. Um, is, I'll go over here. <laughs> I like that go-to. So if you lie down on your back. Yes. How is this? Is this okay? Yes. Okay. Is it okay if I touch your shoulder yeah. or touch your hair? Sure. Yes. Thanks for asking. Yes. I am not used to a man touching me, so that's new. That's really, it melts my heart <laughs> when I hear that. Uh, makes me feel really good about how days and times are changing and people are getting open about their desire and expectations mm -hmm. and meeting people who are non-judgmental and honoring someone's desire. Mm -hmm. It making my heart feel good. That makes my heart feel good. Thank you. You're welcome. What does cuddling do for you? For me, I feel like, you know, very... Is it okay if I mm. put my leg in you? Mm -hmm. sure. Sure. Cuddling is like a kind of a breathing thing for me. It's someone like, you know, very close to my heart. When I even sometimes know that person barely, but that person is that open, that non-judgmental and practicing openness, uh, listening me beautifully. And I feel like very touched, I feel like seen, I still feel like heard. That's kind of very healthy. I feel like these things are very much, you know, not present in everywhere, which is very, like almost every people is craving for that. So I think it's like a feeling people more closely without judgmental, 
so it 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 is a solution for me, especially it's a happiness. Did you grow up with a lot of touch? Not really. I I grew up in a country next to India. There was a lot of social restrictions, religious restrictions. Very rarely touched by boys and girls and mingle or even the partner, something like that. Um, most people are not really open to uh, talk about their sexuality, their uh, craving for intimacy. Or most people maybe don't know sexuality and intimacy is little different things, not the same. I think a lot of people confuse intimacy with sexuality, and while they do overlap, they don't always. And I think that's part of the that's part of the disconnect. And it's I don't know. Are you hopeful that the world might make those connections and see it for what it is? I see the change. Being honest, I had opportunity to go few countries. I see people are hungry for having the change because they need their mental food. Hmm. These interactions are the mental food. They are looking for a way out from the place where they are stuck with their life because of the social tradition, because of the box society or laws or religion, like, you know, create for them. So I think, yeah, a lot of people are coming and it will grow. And it is growing, actually, and so many people are practicing things in so many ways. People talk more about mental health nowadays. Mm-hmm. It's a beautiful thing, not maybe enough till today, but it is growing, which is hopeful. I think the more we talk about it, the freer we are. Yeah. We need to talk about where we feel afraid, because when we talk about our fear, our afraidness, you know, we found more love, because love is everywhere. Uh, most people are afraid of fear, but you know, in the next layer there is love. Love is covered by fear. So they just need to be a little more open, talk. And I think uh, the idea of consent and boundaries give a more love if they can uh, make a safe container by love. Uh, people will open up more about their desire and expectations. Thank you, Ari. You're welcome. (sighs) After the break, I get to reconnect back in the lap of Amanda Ananda. Is it okay (laughs) if I put my arm around your shoulders? Yes. Can I put my arm around here? Yes. Oh, it's bringing me back to five years ago. (laughs) (laughs) I'm Kyone Wolf. This is Audacious. Be right back. Please me, all you gotta do is squeeze me Don't whisper words, they only be befuddle me Cuddle me, cuddle me Just put those arms around me and cuddle me This is Audacious. I'm Kyone Wolf, and we are in the middle of a cuddle party. Amanda Ananda and Isaac Palman facilitated this pajama-clad consent workshop along with 23 other people at Amanda's home in Killingworth, Connecticut. I'd originally interviewed Amanda five years before reconnecting with her at this party recently, and I wanted to see what had changed in this line of work since then. So after getting some snacks, cuddle party can really take it out of you, Amanda situated herself in a comfy chair... Okay, so you're sitting down on this big chair, and I'm going to sit on your lap. Yeah, and maybe get cozy. Get cozy. <laughs> Is it okay if I put my arm around yes. your shoulders? Yes. Can I put my arm around here? Yes. Oh, it's bringing me back to five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny because I've been cuddling with men tonight, and mm. that's new for me. And mm-hmm. I feel more comfortable cuddling with you, partially because I've cuddled with you before, mm-hmm. but also because you're, uh, you identify as woman. Mm. And um, that's just interesting f- sort of feeling for thought for me to mm-hmm. explore. And also the last time you and I cuddled, I'd been seeing the woman who I would marry for a couple of years. And so there was a dynamic, like, am I cheating on her? Oh, right. But, I, you know, she knew I was coming to see you. Right. And, and so 
now uh, she moved out at the end of August. Mm. So it's been nine months without much physical touch. Mm. So it's a different, it's, it's weird, it's wild. It's a totally different mm. context to be touched by you now and to be touching you. And mm. I know that you and I haven't been through the same things, but we've both been divorced. And yeah. Experienced yeah. that. Uh-uh. It's a heart wrenching time. But that's also when I kind of had my breakdown, breakthrough moment that I wouldn't be where I am without it. So it's like, oh, the worst, one of the worst experiences I think a human can have. And also a beautiful invitation to return to ourselves. In between the last time you and I worked together, Mm -hmm. (laughs) uh, there's been a pandemic Mm -hmm. and... You took some time off, yeah, from the cuddling? Yes, yes. I refrained from offering cuddle services for, a, yeah, almost two and a half years. What made you start up again? I also went through another breakup, so also had returned to remembering the pandemic of loneliness. And knowing I'm not the only one, knowing there's so many, you know, this is still an issue and probably an issue that's had a magnifying glass on it for the last few years. And um, when it was safe again, knowing I wanted to return to offering it um, and figuring out how can I do that in a safe way that still mitigates spread. Yeah. 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 Everybody who came tonight had to show a negative rapid test and... That made me feel really good. (laughs) So thank you for that. Yeah, I'm very much into keeping communities safe as much as possible, but finding balance and not, not, I don't think we have to completely continue to isolate, um, that there are needs that need to be met, but finding ways to do that safe ways. When people come to cuddle parties, what change do you usually notice with people? And I know that it starts with people are tense mm-hmm. <laughs> when they get there for a mm-hmm. lot of reasons. Either they're bringing in this tension mm-hmm. or they're tense because they're here. What do you see change? Yeah, there's often a lot of anxiety, right? <laughs> a lot of social anxiety. We kind of come in as middle schoolers who are like, what the hell is going to happen? Am I going to be rejected? <laughs> what if somebody says no to me? Or what if I can't say no? So, you know, there's just so many concerns. Honestly, sometimes people have come and they say no to everything. They're like, no, I'm just here to witness. I'm here for the snacks. Mm-hmm. I've had people come in a partnership where one person is like totally affectionate, you know, cuddle monster, and the other person's like, no f- way. I'm just here for my partner. Mm-hmm. And I've, I used to be concerned about that and be like, and you know, I would have judgment and fear of, oh my God, they're not having a good time or whatever. But at the end of the event, they'd often come forward and be like, oh, I'm so grateful my, cu- my partner got their cuddle needs met. Like this was so great for us. You know, and even the people that don't participate at all in the first event, by the second, third, fourth event, they are participating, they're feeling safe, they say their dating life has changed because they can ask her what they want and not feel totally devastated when they get a no, or they just have more courage to ask her what they want, so they're experiencing more pleasure in their life because they have the capacity to be like, yeah, I can ask this and it's okay if you say no. (laughs) Yeah, to have a community of people that have a unified language that get to practice it with each other. This is, it's kind of like this scientific experiment tonight, this little like laboratory of play. And then people feel so much more empowered to, to do it outside of this space. And we tend to gather in other ways in this community. So this is like a baseline of communication for the whole community. And then it becomes so much easier for everyone to experience more yeses and, and like less boundary violations. Mm. Is there anything I didn't ask you? I think just that I hope people feel welcome to try it, that they feel safe being curious about it. It's a safe space for people to be honest about what their needs are. And if our society was, if everyone in our society had that capacity, how different would our society be? And Uh. so I think it's an amazing gift to get to, to experience that and give that to ourselves and become the agents of change in our society by just embodying more of this. 
To put words to your needs. What mm. what a concept. <laughs> what a beautiful concept. We all deserve it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Amanda Ananda, thanks for cuddling me. <laughs> Thank you for asking. <laughs> it's a joy to have you here tonight, and I hope you come back. On the rainy ride home, I tried to put my finger on what I was feeling. I'm thinking about intimacy, right? And when I cuddle with someone, it's because I love them. And because they love me. It's because I want them. And because they want me. And when I say want, I mean, like, love. I felt really stiff when I was cuddling with people. And there was an element missing and that was wanting. And I clearly connect cuddling with wanting. And so how do you cuddle when you don't want them? And I mean want by want, desire. What, what's the consequence of being unable to separate cuddling from desiring and wanting to be desired. What's the consequence of keeping that connection? Are people happier when they can separate it? When cuddling is as potent and as meaningful and as healing without sexual desire? Are they more likely to be happy? Because there are fewer conditions tied to their cuddling. Uh, <laughs> brain, brain, I don't know. At the same time, I think a lot about what's sacred to me. Cuddling feels sacred in a certain kind of way. Is that the way I'm wired? Is that changeable? Can I change the utility of cuddling? Can I unravel cuddling from intimacy and sex? An attraction? Do I want to? What's the consequence if I don't? What are the benefits of staying the way I am and only receiving touch when it has all these other elements attached to it? Or touch only being effective or healing or meaningful when there are these conditions attached to it? Can I even change my wiring to want and benefit from being touched when attraction and desire have no role? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Tune in next week. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know what would make me happier. Yes, the answer would be different if I'm not touched for years. And the answer would be different if I had someone I loved and was attracted to who was just as affectionate as I am. I don't know. I'll let you know. I'm almost home. Whiskey! You want to start a cuddle party, Whiskey? You'd be so good at it. <laughs> I love you too. Audacious is always lovingly produced by me, Jessica Severin Martinez, and Katie Talarski at Connecticut Public Radio in Hartford. Thanks to Amanda Ananda, Isaac Palman, and everybody at the Cuddle Party for being so vulnerable and so very cuddleable. You can find out more about Cuddle Parties on today's webpage at ctpublic.org slash audacious. I'll have a photo there too from way back in 2017 of me and Amanda glowing post-cuddle. Subscribe to Audacious and you'll always get to hear the show a day early. And if you like experiential episodes like this one, you can scroll back to ones featuring things like what I was mad about at the end of my first experience at a nudist resort. You can come dumpster diving with me in an Aldi. And you can find out what it was like for me to not speak for a week for our show about vows of silence. You can hear them all wherever you get your podcasts. 
Send me your reactions and show ideas on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Kion Wolf, or send an email to audacious at ctpublic.org. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.